family will also undergo surgery. An update with ABC's James Longman. Buckingham Palace released a statement saying King Charles will undergo surgery next week. In a statement, the palace said, in common with thousands of men each year, the king has sought treatment for an enlarged prostate. His Majesty's condition is benign. Prostate problems are common among men Charles' age. The 75-year-old will stay at the hospital overnight and has also cancelled engagements until he recovers. The amount of U.S. Capitol Police threat assessment cases are up heading into an election year. More with reporter Lisa Taylor. In 2023, the USCP's threat assessment section investigated just over 8,000 cases. The number of cases is likely to go up this year because of the presidential election, according to USCP press release. Members of Congress of either party tend to receive a wide range of threats and concerning statements through the mail, phone, or online. I'm Lisa Taylor. A rare public statement from Richard Simmons speaking up about a proposed biopic about his life. More from ABC's Andrew Dimbert. A trailer was released for a short film called The Court Jester, with comedian Pauly Shore playing Richard Simmons, reclusive fitness icon, issuing a rare statement. The 75-year-old saying on Facebook, they may be doing a movie about me with Pauly Shore. I have never given my permission for this movie, so don't believe everything you read. I no longer have a manager, and I no longer have a publicist. I just try to live a quiet life and be peaceful. The production company behind the film saying, while we would love to have Simmons involved, we respect his desire to privacy and plan to produce a movie that honors him, celebrates him, and tells a dramatic story. The Grammy Museum Foundation is getting a generous boost for its campaign for music education. The campaign is receiving a $2 million donation from the Ray Charles Foundation. The campaign for music education began those, in 2022 and helps expand <laughs> music education in schools. Drink, the museum, is- which is located in I had one of those, but I finished it some time ago. Uh, uh, so, um, <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it, it served its purpose while I was uh, drinking it. I was t- tasty from Starbucks. Hey, Richard, can you hear me? Yes. Should I turn off my phone now or, or put it on silent or what? You can certainly do that. Put your phone on silent if you'd like. Sure. Okay. Antique radio uh-huh. show. Just don't mute your microphone on Zoom. Fraser Elizabeth Stewart, Santa Barbara's Treasure Sleuth, will help you put a value on the treasures in your own home. Every time it rains, it rains pennies from heaven. Don't you know each cloud contains pennies from heaven? So let's find out how valuable is it? Well, hello, 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 hello. No, I am not Elizabeth Stewart. I'm Richard Dugan, Dr. D, filling in. Uh, Starting out here at the front of the program, I want to just let you know that uh, Bear, her beloved dachshund, or uh, I know she has another different pronunciation for it, but nonetheless, uh, we in the uh, peasant world, if you will, we call them wiener dogs. (laughs) Unfortunately, uh, poor poor Bear passed away uh, yesterday. Uh, unfortunately, in the passing, he um, also uh, injured uh, uh, Elizabeth. So she is uh, spending some time uh, uh, with medics uh, taking care of her injuries uh, externally. And we send our prayers, our love and all that we have here uh, to Elizabeth and uh, and and um, and to bear, too, because I know he's still around, but uh, not in the body anymore. And so this program is not only, of course, dedicated to Elizabeth, but also dedicated to to bear the doctrine, I think, or something along those lines. Well, today we have an interesting program, and I'm thankful uh, to have the opportunity to uh, talk with uh, this uh, this particular woman who has a talent, at least if I'm correct, if I am correct, um, that uh, uh, I practiced many, many years ago, uh, I'll basically say back when I was I think in eighth grade, learning the piano. Uh, her name, and I'm going to uh, uh, let you know that she's a part of this uh, wonderful production. It's a memoir. This is, uh, and I'll, let me tell you, that's the pianist of Wilsenden Lane. It's adapted and directed by um, Hershey Felder, based on the book. Uh, it's uh, Children of Wilden's Lane. Wi- I beg your pardon, Wilsden Lane, Beyond the Kinder Transport. Uh, again, a memoir of love and survival by Mona Galabek. I want to thank you so much for being with us here on the program. I uh, I hope I got most of that pronounced correctly. I, I like to be respectful. How are you doing this morning? 
Well, it's great to say hello to you and to say hello to all your listeners there in Santa Barbara and absolute condolences and thoughts for Bear and Elizabeth. That's that's just so sad. And uh, yeah. so we'll dedicate the, 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 the things that we're going to be speaking about to mm-hmm. her and to her precious dog. And yes, you got it all oh. pretty much there <laughs> all the all the pronouncements you you hit thank it out you. of the park <laughs> thank you thank you so much i do want to give out some more information we'll give this out throughout the program uh and having to do with the fact that this is uh, a performance that goes from uh february 1st the first of february through the uh if i'm correct the 18th of february and it's going to be at the new vic theater uh, the New Vic Theater, 33 West Victoria. Right now, it is just down the street from us here uh, at uh, AM 1290, FM 96.9 KZSB. If you want to get tickets, they're available, 805-965-5400, 805-965-5400. Tickets are available. I could run down the prices, but let me just say that uh, February 1st, Thursday, 7.30 p.m. performance, Friday the 2nd at 8 p.m., it opens Saturday thir- the 3rd at 8 p.m. That's a uh, press opening. And then it runs, as I said before, the 1st through the 18th, 2024. Uh, they, uh, uh, it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And um, first of all, Mona, um, how did you become involved with this production? Which, if it involves what I think it does, and I'm going to be learning about that, um, it's not an easy thing to do. That is an understatement. (laughs) Please go ahead. Um, Well, it's a one person show. And and very often I say to myself in the theatrical runs that that Hershey has, Mr. Felder has brought me around the world. I often say before I walk out on stage, who was the idiot that agreed to this schedule? (laughs) (laughs) I look at myself in the mirror, but um, it's, it's, it's the most extraordinary privilege for me to do this and to Mm -hmm. share this story. And how it happened was that when I was a little girl, my mother taught me the piano. And in those piano lessons, she told me the story of her life. She always said that each piece of music tells a story. So I would hear about this set of mysterious characters that she grew up with. I heard about the train ride that she took to escape from the darkness that was coming into her beautiful, beloved Vienna the Vienna of the 1930s. And we're talking about the world of Mahler and Mozart and and Jung and uh, Herzl, all all these extraordinary artists from the turn of the century and through through many centuries. And her mother had filled her heart with these stories and with this music. And every Friday was the most important day of her week when she was 12, 13 years old. She'd get on a trolley and she'd go to the center of the city and she would have her piano lesson with her beloved professor. Well, her world fell apart when the Anschluss happened, Hitler, the rise, and the day that her teacher told her that he could no longer teach her because uh, the Jewish students couldn't study any longer and it crushed her. And of course, it um, led to the extraordinary night that is known as Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass. Yes when a wave of anti-Semitism spread across across Europe that was so extraordinary and so horrible, uh, the the burning down of synagogues, the burning of Torahs, of of books, I I think we all very much know about it. And it's particularly moving and deeply upsetting when we see what is going on in the world today. And so I have seen how my mother's story has so much relevance as I go around the world and bring this to audiences, to readers, uh, to students in these, we do very massive, large citywide reads uh, across the world. And so what happened was the Kristallnacht uh, set in motion this desperation for the Jews of Europe. Among them were my grandparents and my grandfather, uh, Abraham, was so desperate to get a ticket to save his children on what had become a rescue operation known as the Kinder Transport. It was born in England. Uh, Parliament quickly came together, leaders of the Jewish community along with uh, righteous Christians to say, how can we save some children? And push this through with no real uh, planning or it just was a, a almost a crazy how they have put it together. 
And now of this desperation, families lined up in the major cities of Europe to see if they could get a ticket. So this is the story of almost like a Sophie's choice. Which daughter do you choose? Because there were three girls mm -hmm. and only one ticket. And how my grandfather got that ticket is, is amazing as well. I don't want to give it away. So it's the story of the middle child, Lisa, who was chosen because she had her music. And she would always tell me when I was a little girl how she was chosen because my grandmother, for whom I'm named, said, you will have your music and that will give you the strength to survive an uncertain future. And when, wherever you go, I will be with you through that music. Never forget that. Hmm. And that's what gave my mother the strength to face uh, that day boarding a train, um, not knowing if she'd ever see her family again or her sisters. And the story then goes forward in the most extraordinary way of what happens to her in England, whom she fell in love with, how she ended up on a street uh, called Wilsden Lane at a hostel, a Jewish hostel that housed 30 other kids just like herself, and how they all banded together. And through my mother's music and the dream that she had to keep alive to become a pianist, they drank in that dream, they supported her. And what happens? Does she achieve that dream? What happens to all their families? Are they reunited? Uh, they go through the blitz together, they grow up together. It's a great coming of age story. And through it all is this powerful character, the music mm. that is by my side on the stage. As I have a habit to do when I'm interviewing people, I throw in uh, some of my own personal stuff and uh, I'll keep it very brief because I want to hear more about uh, this production, especially at the uh, new Vic coming up the first through the 18th of February. We certainly hope that you folks will uh, uh, avail yourselves of this opportunity. Get tickets, uh, give the uh, the new Vic a call. And actually it's ETC. Actually, it's uh, the uh, Ensemble Theater Company website, which is ETC sb.org or you can call 805-965-5400 i was part of a production here in santa barbara with the santa barbara revels uh, on uh, during the month of december uh, my second year in the group and this particular production had to do with uh events that were taking place and of course uh, they were they were fictional but they were surrounded by historical events uh, hist I, I'm still trying to figure out whether historical is correct or historic, but be that as it may. Um, and one of the elements in this uh, was that uh, we had um, German, Jewish, and Irish and Spanish people uh, of those languages, especially who were stuck on Ellis Island on Christmas Eve, 1924, shortly after Congress had revised the immigration laws in terms of um, what's the word I want um, uh, quotas and the quotas had been met up to that point. And so we all had to stay on Ellis Island uh, and so forth. Well, one of the stories that was told is of what you were just talking about. And I have to tell you that even though I'm an actor up there on stage uh, as part of the group of Irish immigrants, uh, I'm sitting there and I'm tearing up. Now, yeah. not not the character, the Irish soldier who participated in World War One in the trenches, Richard Dugan, who was sitting there listening to this story. And I'm going, you have got to be kidding me. Right. Right. So I'm curious, you, you obviously uh, not wanting to give away, uh, uh, you know, uh, some of the premises. Uh, we want people to go and see the, the performance. But what about what about you as as uh, uh, if, we, if we can put it this way, a one woman show? Um, uh, is that something that uh, uh, still impacts you when you are performing in this or any other where you find it a little difficult to stay in character because you are so, you know, you're so moved by, you know, the events in the drama? Well, that's such a powerful question you're asking. And I certainly came into this uh, opportunity through um through the, uh, the guidance of Hershey Felder, extraordinary artist, and he took a chance on me because before that I was just a concert pianist. But I learned and I studied because this was my dream to bring this story to the world. And I also learned that you, and you know this of course as an actor, that you, you use the emotions that you have on stage to, uh, to help you uh, as you are out there. 
but it's a great question. I mean, there are some nights I'm overcome. I'm becoming my mother on the stage. Hmm. Uh, she challenged me to put on a red wig. My mother's hair was red and become her and portray her and portray the characters that she met along the way, the beautiful souls that helped her to survive and to have and to fulfill uh, many parts of her dreams. And I'm overcome at various sections along the way. There's an extraordinary section about D-Day. And sometimes I can't even speak through it. I'm playing the Rachmaninoff Prelude in C-sharp minor with those heroic chords that we all know. And I think of the British people and their bravery under the Blitz. My mother would often tell me how, because every child had to get a job in that hostel, in that orphanage, basically, where they were. They didn't know it was an orphanage, but they called it the hostel. But many would discover after the war that their parents hadn't survived. Um, but they had to get a job to help contribute to the hostel. My mom got a job uh, working long hours on sewing machines. And she would say, emerging from the tube in the morning during the Blitz, the bravery that she saw of the British people turning up. She'd see the disheveled buildings, the war-torn buildings. <clears throat> She'd arrive at the factory. People were missing. They had died during the bombing. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm choked up when I think about that scene in the story where we see an image that Hershey Felder projected into the sets of the rows of um, crosses and Star of David's in the cemetery uh, in Normandy in France, when we think about D-Day and the sacrifice, the sacrifice of a generation so that you and I and all of us can walk in freedom today. And it really, really guts your soul because you you take a look at what's going on in the world today i mean it's horrendous yeah and in humanity to man it's horrendous what we're seeing and the refugee crisis is the greatest we've ever seen we also see our own nation torn apart and how do we how do we come together we need stories of man's humanity to man i, I will share with you the one scene i was in in this uh performance uh back in december middle december at the libero uh, I was one of the Irish soldiers, and we were sitting there uh, behind the behind the barbed wire and and our 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 barricades and our uh, bunkers. And off in the distance was this German soldier singing, um, oh, I can't even think of the German title, uh, 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 Silent Night, and moving forward, carrying a small little Christmas tree. And all of a sudden, in the Friday night performance, I'm there. I am there and I'm thinking, wow, I can't believe this person is risking being shot by our side right? and so forth and continues to move forward, continues to sing. Uh, and then we go through this and I had a solo in there where I am singing to this soldier and then to the audience and I walk up and, and I won't go through the lyrics, but basically uh, I have this little flask supposedly of, of secret uh, brandy. And then a little cigarette, you know, uh, and so forth. And I hand her, I hand the soldier the brandy. And then I hand the cigarette. And then we embrace because the lyrics in the song from the, the music from uh, Christmas in the Trenches. Uh, one by one, uh, they entered no man's land uh, without a, a gun or bayonet. Uh, we met their hand in hand. We shared a secret brandy and uh, wished each other well, which I embraced the soldier. And then I turned to the audience and in that flare lit soccer game, we gave them hell. And I got, I couldn't believe I got a laugh from that, but it was a heck of a shift emotionally, but there I was. And I started to tear up as I'm singing those first three or four lines before the one on the soccer. And after the performance, uh, I talked with uh, the other actor whose name was grace. And, and she, and he said, uh, you almost, you, you started to make me cry. And so the next three performances, we tried to hold it together right when right. you are up there performing now when you're playing the piano your emotions you you could tear up and all of that kind of stuff because it's not your voice that's coming out but how does that impact how you play because that has to ha that the emotion has to come into play when when you're doing that despite you know what's been written on the on the page by the composer sure sure it really deepens the performance mm -hmm. And I can say over time, I've come to understand more deeply my mother, 
or at least I think I have. I've understood my grandparents uh, more and the choices and the, and the sacrifices that they made and the un, unbelievable uh, sacrifice they did mm-hmm. for a parent to say goodbye and put a child on a train. And I've come to understand more deeply all these characters along the way. So as I'm playing the music and I feel the, the, the story and I feel what, these, what this generation went through and think about what's going on today, it just deepens my incredible hope for empathy. Mm-hmm. You're really talking about when, when you described just now that scene of the silent night. Mm-hmm and soldiers from opposite sides of the war, we all know really deep down, nobody really wants to fight. People are good. People want to come together. It's it's other factors uh, of people that even control the lives of, of all these beautiful young people that are sent off to war, half the time not even knowing what they're being sent off to do. It's, it's obscene. And we have to figure out a way to, I don't know if it's a spiritual shift in the world. I don't know what it's going to take. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about music there. Look, it was music and silent night that for a moment stopped that hatred and said, we're, we're flesh and blood. We're the same. Yeah. I don't have the answer at all. I just try in my own small, humble way to tell a story that now I've had the privilege to bring to millions across the globe through uh, Hershey Felder's production, through my, um, I have an amazing partnership with the USC Shoah Foundation, founded by Steven Spielberg. We were given a $10 million grant to spread this story through educational resources online at a platform called The Wilsden Project in multiple languages across the globe. Um, so, and I've, I've brought this story now to London, New York, um, Chicago. It's just been an extraordinary privilege, privilege. And what happens mostly is that people after the show say, you've told my story, or mm. you told the story of my parents, or you told the story of someone I know, my neighbor, or you've told the story of what is going on in the world today. And that is what I think when you have that privilege, uh, you, uh, you, you want to be worthy of that. Well, I, I think that, that, and I have to tell you that when I first auditioned for this particular performance myself, two songs came up. And I remember when I'm listening to them on YouTube, I started to cry. Those two songs were Isle of Hope, Isle of Tears, singing about uh, the opening and then, of course, the closing of Ellis Island. And then the other one was The Green Fields of France. Wow. Speaking to what you were just talking about. And Willie McBride is laying there in his grave at the age of 19, forever trapped, if you will, or ever forever 19. Right. And the the uh, author of the song has a verse in there that it goes along. I paraphrase. Did you really think that you and your comrades were going to enter this uh, this fight and, and this would be the war to end all wars? I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but. We've done it again and again and again and again. And I, I tell you, when I first back in August of last year, when I, you know, chose to uh, audition and I, I pulled those songs up and I'm coming down the mountain here in Santa Barbara, 154. I live at the top. And I had to be very careful because I was crying as I'm <laughs> singing along with this song, these two songs. I mean, it's quite remarkable, the emotional impact. Tell me about the uh, the music. Tell me about uh, um, uh, you mentioned. Uh, was it Mahler? Well, we we were talking about a world that we're going to lose. The, yeah, the extraordinary European elegance, uh, the Vienna of the nineteen thirties, where, her, her, as I said, Lisa's that was my mother's name. Lisa's heart is filled with the stories of the great composers from Mozart to Mahler to Brahms, all of these great composers came to Vienna to perform and to work and uh, to conduct. And the thing that Hershey and I designed together in the show is that we chose pieces of music, not only that my mother played and studied, but that tell the story. So the narrative is swept along through the music. For example, if you want to give your listeners a little touch of the most famous piece that we all know, Claire de Lune uh, by Debussy, 
That's what my mother went to play in the apartment when her mother told her that she was chosen. It was also Malka's favorite piece. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and she went to the piano, played the Claire de Lune, because she knew she wanted something to soothe her as well as her mother. Yeah. Maybe we can have a little taste of that. I'm, I'm actually playing a little bit of that in the background here as we continue here on Arts and Antiques here on AM 1290 FM 96.9 KZSB. This particular portion is quite calming. It's uh, quite soothing in that respect. Uh, you also yeah. mentioned Mahler, and I remember if I'm if I have the composer's uh, composition correct, I went to the uh, Granada Theater a few years ago, uh, and the Santa Barbara Symphony Orchestra played. Uh, was it Mahler's Fifth? Which yeah. I talked with one of the violinists, and they said, "Well, we don't refer to it as Mahler's Fifth. We refer to it as the Hurt Locker," and I, when I was watching and listening, I'm going, was this Mahler on medication? This guy needs to be sedated. He's schizophrenic, you know, because he was all over the place with uh, crescendo, decrescendo, and, and I mean, up and down and all over the place. I thought it was marvelous. But even this piece by Debussy, Deb is it Debussy or Debussy? Well, actually, what you're playing right now, my dear, is the second movement of the Grieg piano concerto. No, I understand that. I, I, I do understand that. Uh, I was just making reference to that uh, uh, program that I saw. But uh, in, in terms of this piece of music that we are listening to, and we'll listen to a little bit more here in a few minutes, um, uh, this, this has its, its if, again, if I'm using the right terms here from, in music, if I remember correctly, from music class in grade school <laughs> and in band, can, in, in band in high school, the crescendo and the decrescendo, the going loud and then yes. softening and yes. so forth. Yeah. Uh, this piece actually uh, uh, has a lot of that, but it's still, uh, and there's something about classical music uh, that is just astounding. What is really interesting to me though, Mona, is what we think of it today in the 21st century and, and even before. And what, they thought of it, the powers that be, back when it was being written and performed. It was, it was, I mean, it was, uh, every people, the critics were not kind in many instances because they thought it was too body. It was, it was too this, too that, too the other, specifically the church, because a lot of times the church would commission these composers to write maybe a mass or something of that nature. Uh, what what about uh, your the, the the impact of these composers on you uh, and your psyche, if you will, on your soul, if you will, on your mental state? Because there have been lots of studies that have been done. Right, that music can uh, heal us or provide healing, or we, we talk about newborn babies or, or babies even before coming out of their precious mothers and playing classical music. There's a lot of studies, of course, about that and helping. Mm -hmm. Uh, children with learning disorders. Um, look, music is the universal language. It's extraordinary. Yeah. Sometimes you can be in such despair. It also unites people, even when they may have differences or whatnot, as you alluded in the story that you shared, listening to a piece of music together has the magic to break down walls. I've seen how the music in this show affects audiences. They become deeply emotional. I, I've heard the crying especially as it relates to the storyline and speaks to the universal losses and the universal triumphs that we all can relate to. So yeah. music is, is the most, what is the most powerful aspect of this entire story. I have to wonder uh, with your description there, if maybe it's more accurate to say that mathematics is not the universal language music <laughs> It's the universal language. <laughs> I, I think so. Although, let me tell you, there are many mathematicians that uh, feel very close to music and vice versa. I don't know what it is, but there seems to be some kind of a, 
an invisible uh, through line here uh, to uh, mathematicians loving uh, classical music. I know that there's many doctors in the operating room that play classical music. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, you've touched upon a, a very important question here, which is classical music today. Yeah. With audiences today. And it's, it, it's worth talking about it for a moment. Mm -hmm. Education, the schools, uh, the classical arts, the, the funding is less and less in our growing problems in public education. We're not building audiences for classical music. Uh, I often think about why, why does rap, why does rock, why, why, does, why do all these other genres attract young people much more than classical music? And mm. I think it's because there's a story. I think there's lyrics. They relate to that. It's mm -hmm. simple. Classical music, for the most part, doesn't have uh, any text or lyrics, except if you're listening to opera. And of course, opera has its rabid fans uh, out there. I think it's important to try to really look at the salvation of classical music. It's dwindling more and more in terms of support to orchestras, support to building up audiences. Um, I think it's viewed by a generation as those dead old white men. <laughs> Why are we listening to them? Uh, and all these things are valid discussions to have if we want to save so much of the great culture that has come yeah. before us. Well, believe it or not, in my 20s, of all ages, I was a member of the Columbia Classical Music Club, and I would get CDs. And at that time, I was working, I can't remember which shift I was working, but I know it was an eight-hour shift at the station I was working for at the time. And I was living in a trailer with my first wife, a mobile home, if you will. <clears throat> and I would come home. She was still at work. I would come home. I would throw one of those CDs in there, into the CD player. I would lay down on the couch and invariably would fall asleep. But I would fall asleep to the classical music. And I never fully understood, even to this day, why, and this is something that I've tried to give up, and that is the need to know why. The fact is, I enjoy classical music. There are times when, as much as I love country music, I flip over to classical music station here in Santa Barbara. Um, and uh, every once in a while, I might locate one of those CDs, and I may throw it into a, although a CD player is somewhat ancient of some sort, it's almost as ancient as a turntable, uh, there's just something about it and and um, it is soothing if you if you like the piece that that we'll be playing here in just another couple of minutes here I want to I want to go back to that there's just something about it it's like if I'm having troubles I mean I, I don't know about you but if I'm going through some stuff you know and I don't have anybody around here uh, me to uh, to bolster and support and encourage and inspire me I'll go to classical music and it will do all of those things. And it hasn't said a word. I couldn't I, agree with you more. It's stunning. It's like magic. Yeah. It somehow emerges. And I think this all again goes back to education and exposure and the mm -hmm. opportunity. I'm particularly thrilled that the theater uh, and the, the folks there have arranged for a matinee where I'm going to be performing for students. They're, they're bringing in from one of your uh, school districts. I, I don't know which one, but that right. is the joy to see how students respond to this and uh, are exposed to classical music and love it. And most people tell me that uh, watch the show or uh, have experienced it in some form, whether it's mm -hmm. online or um, live, they say, I will never listen to Claire de Lune the same. I will, <laughs> never, I will never listen to the Greek piano concerto the same. I will think of your mother. I will mm. think of the loss. I will think of the triumph. I will think yeah. of the power of helping others. And I won't look at a, I won't view someone who's Jewish. I will, I will understand greater what the Holocaust meant. I will understand greater what racism means. And just because someone has a different color or religion, I will not view them in that way. They are part of humanity, as as is a refugee, and that's been the extraordinary effect of this um, book and this uh, opportunity to bring this show. Well, I want to uh, play a little more of this as we continue talking uh, about uh, this performance. Uh, let's see if I can't uh, bring something up here. Let's go ahead and do that. Thank <laughs> you. 
This is from uh, the pianist of Wilsden Lane. It's adapted and directed by uh, Hershey Felder, based on the book, The Children of Wilsden, Wilsden Lane, <laughs> Beyond the Kinder Transport. It's a memoir of music, love, and survival. And uh, it is performed uh, one woman show by Mona Golubek. Who is Lee Cohen? Because that's he's listed here too. And uh, what is his part in all of this? He is the co-author of the book. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Now, folks, you can preview. Uh, February 1st is when the performances begin. Goes through the 18th of February at the New Vic. They've done a great job. It's the Ensemble Theater Company at the, at the New Vic, 33 West Victoria Street here in Santa Barbara. For tickets, you can go to etcsb.org that's for of course the uh, ensemble theater company santa barbara etcsb.org or give them a call the phone number is 805-565-965 uh, beg your pardon 805-965-5400 805-965-5400 and we certainly hope that you folks will will avail yourselves of this uh it's it's not only a wonderful evening out but uh, or afternoon for matinees and so forth, but I think that uh, uh, I'm and I am I'm guessing here. Please tell me, um, people are uh, given additional information throughout the performance of what's going on and what's happening in terms of uh, uh, this memoir that 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 you are presenting. It's a complete story and people, when they arrive at the end, will know what happened to Lisa, will know what happened to her family. They'll know what happened to her sisters. They'll find out if she fulfilled her dream. They'll find wow. out how she went through all of this and who my father is. Mm. It's, it, you know, it's, it's very interesting. You have chosen to share yourself, your family, with uh with the world as it were and yet there are a lot of people who for whatever reason for, uh, sometimes for security reasons you know i can't do that because someone may misuse this information it's like we all have stories and they need to be told right absolutely no story is greater or uh, more profound than another I, I often say that i have six million numbers etched on my heart and that mm. references the six million uh, precious souls uh, out of the Holocaust. I really should say I have 12, uh, 12 million. There were many more beyond just the Jewish people, but because we are a small, uh, I, of course I'm Jewish, and since we are a small part of the population in general, uh, the magnitude of the loss of 6 million was utterly uh, obscene. Uh, and so I say that 6 million numbers were etched on my heart and that I really didn't have a choice in many ways. My mother told me the story uh, it entered my heart. It absolutely created a fire in my heart. And years later, when I was engaged to play the very piece that she dreamed of making her debut in, in Vienna, mm -hmm. the Greek piano concerto, I set out to uh, want to tell this and share it with the world. Because I believe there were very important messages, messages of empowerment. And what's our purpose here on this earth? To take care of others. So. I never gave up and one day I got the book published and then one day my path crossed with Hershey Felder and it changed the course of my life. So you could say that I was obsessed. <laughs> my my family say I'm they say I'm driven to share this story. I am. I I hope uh, we've brought it to millions and uh, I hope one day we will bring it to even many more millions through the power of a, either a movie or a streaming series. And we just believe this is, is, I mean, students have told me the best book they've ever read, mm. hundreds of thousands of letters across the globe to the story and the power of, of what it tells them to never give up on a dream, no matter what, and to find the thing that's going to get you through the darkest of times. And I just want to say to your listeners, if I may, uh, my dear friend, in closing, if I may, yes, uh, because I'm about to get on a Zoom with Austria. Ah. there and Austria is uh, proposing now to turn this uh, play uh, into uh, for the German speaking audience across Germany and Austria and they're going to create a whole German version of this 
My book is now in German and about to be adopted into curriculum. So we're seeing an incredible growth of other countries wanting to translate the story, translate uh, the play and bring it to their audiences in their native languages, of course. I don't speak German well enough to do it. <laughs> and uh, they'll train a young uh, actress uh, eventually uh, to do this, but we were very honored to receive this invitation from the Salzburg uh, State Theater. Mm. And I'm going to get on a Zoom right now with this gentleman. Uh, uh, they know that I'm doing the show in Santa Barbara. I believe they're even sending some folks to come out and see it. But I really hope that those of you out there listening to this uh, interview that I've had the privilege of having right now, um, I hope you will consider coming to see the show. I promise you, if you come, I promise you, you will be deeply moved. Mm. And you will find a story that will enter your heart. Mona Golabek, my guest. She is the one woman show, if you will, the pianist of uh, Willens Deck. Willens Den, I will get that pronunciation like I did at the front end of the program. Willens Den Lane, it's adapted and directed by Hershey uh, Felder, and it's based upon the book, uh, Children of uh, Willen, Willens Den Lane. And uh, we certainly hope that you folks will get out to the new Vic. Uh, Mona, thank you so much for being with us. It's too bad that uh, you do have to run, I understand. Uh, but um, uh, this has been fascinating and um me being only 1%, according to uh, Ancestry.com, 1% European, Eastern European Jew, I have an affinity. My favorite interviews, believe it or not, are with rabbis because I know what they go through to study and they educate me so much more than any, <laughs> any of the televangelists ever did in the 80s and 90s. Thank you so much for being with us. Richard, it was an absolute honor and I really enjoyed speaking with you. One of the best interviews I've ever had. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, thank you so much. And uh, give my best to Austria. I will. <laughs> All right. Many blessings. <laughs> yeah. Bye-bye. We certainly hope, folks, that you will uh, make uh, make uh, make it your business, if you will, make it your uh, goal to go to the new Vic and uh, see uh, Mona. We are um, going to take a short break here. Actually, it's a long break, but uh, we will be back with a little bit more of. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll give you some more information as we continue here on uh, AM twelve ninety FM ninety six point nine KZSB. This is the Arts and Antiques radio show, so stay with us.
Welcome back to the Arts and Antiques radio program. I'm Richard Dugan filling in for Elizabeth Stewart. Uh, this program dedicated to the passing of her dear dachshund uh, bear. And, um, uh, and of course, she, she was injured in this process, unfortunately. But our hearts and uh, thoughts and prayers, I should say, go out to her. Uh, and um, she should be back with us next week. We, are, we were talking uh, with uh, Mona Golubek. And uh, she was sharing with us the story of the pianist of Willens Den Lane. It's adapted and directed by Hershey Felder based upon the book that she wrote, Mona wrote, called The Children of Willens Willis Den. I'm trying to get the name correct here. I got it right the first time. And now I'm trying to repeat that. Willens Willis Den Lane. It's Beyond the Kinder Transport. It's a memoir of music, love, and survival by this one woman uh, uh mona Gal uh, galabek and um lee cohen who is the co-author of the book so we hope that you'll uh, make it a point to go to uh the new vic and uh get yourself in there to watch this wonderful form wonderful performance it starts on the first of february and uh, continues through the 18th of February. And I'm looking for all of the wonderful information. You want to go to etcsb.org. That's for Ensemble Theater Company. That's who's putting this on at the New Vic. 33 West Victoria. Give them a call or go online. Give them a call at 805-965-5400. 805-965-5400. And uh, we certainly hope that you will avail yourselves of the tickets. The prices are moderately priced. And uh, very quickly here in the next uh, last couple of minutes that I have here before we take our last break, uh, the pianist of Willis Dan Lane, it uh, opened at the uh, Jeffen Playhouse in Los Angeles in 2012 to wide acclaim. The Los Angeles Times called it an arresting, deeply affecting triumph. And uh, Galabek was uh, nominated for the 2012 Los Angeles Drama Critics Circle Award for theatrical excellence. And uh, since the world premiere, Galabek uh, has performed the show to sold out houses across the country. It was a New York Times critics pick uh, noted for being deeply effective, or I should say deeply affecting. And uh, there's a whole lot more that uh, could be said, but what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick a break here. I shouldn't say quick, but we're going to take a break regardless. And we'll be back with more to wrap things up here on AM 1290 FM 96.9. KZSB, this is the station that talks about Santa Barbara. We stream live at AM 1290 KZSB.com. This is the Arts and Antiques Radio Program.
All right. Well, we are back here on the Arts and Antiques radio program. I'm Richard Dugan filling in for Elizabeth Stewart, who is uh, um, suffering from uh, both a, a minor injury as well as the loss of her dear, dear departed uh, dog, Bear. And this program is dedicated to the both of them. So uh, uh, we um, are grateful for her being a part of AM 1290 and FM 96.9. Uh, obviously, the station that talks about Santa Barbara. But um, we uh, uh, only have about two minutes left here on the program, and we hope that you will uh, stay with us uh, as we continue here. Be sure you, to listen to this program again uh, Friday evening at 8 p.m. And then uh, we're, she's on again Sunday at, I believe it's 10 a.m. So uh, we hope that you will tune in. Uh, and um, make it to the Vic. Make it to the new Vic, uh, the 1st through the 18th. No, you don't have to go to all 18 performances. Go to one of the performances. Um, if, if, if the uh, profundity uh, was not lost on me when I was uh, standing on the stage at the Libero back in December, uh, and it was very profound, this is probably even more profound. I thank you for being with us. We're going to go out uh, with this music and um, join us again next Friday at 10 a.m. for the Arts and Antiques radio program right here on AM 1290, FM 96.9, KZSB, and on the online at am1290kzsb.com.